Hey guys, welcome back to 11 Cups. This is going to be the unboxing impression for our third kettle in this series. Once again, if in case if you missed our previous episodes, essentially what I'm doing is I'm testing out three budget friendly alternative to anybody who's shopping for the fellow EKG but wants something in a more budget friendly option. So I'm testing out four kettles which I'm going to be using on the daily over the next four weeks. Although these four videos are shot around the same time, they are going to be released on a stacker schedule. This way it will, it will give me a bit more time to edit and everything else. So at the end of these videos, I will be doing a head-to-head -head comparison between the four of them after the daily usage. So without further ado, this week we are doing kettle number three and that is going to be the Kosori electric kettle. All right guys, so once again, we are here with a unboxing. This particular kettle have a pretty decent looking box right here. I do like the artwork on here, even though this look to be very instant noodle focused. <laughs> There's quite a few uh, pictures of instant noodle. Obviously this is meant to do any sort of pullover, tea, as well as I guess, uh, yeah, instant noodle. So once again, we will be unboxing this and then compare this kettle to the fellow EKG. So essentially using the EKG as a reference point. And when I was shopping for the kettles, same rule, I wanted something that's a bit more aesthetically pleasing that have the temperature hold function. So what I will be looking for in all of these kettles are temperature stability, good handling, and of course, just overall and ease of use. Now, this kettle is slightly more powerful than the other ones that I have shown in the previous videos. This one is rated at 1200 watts. Once again, we are at 0.8 liters of capacity. And of course, it does claim to have a slow, precise pour for all your manual brewing needs. You have five temperature buttons, a whole temp feature. Again, that's very, very useful. And of course, you have a great safety feature where it's boil dry protection, which means the kettle will shut off if it detects no water on the inside. So this kettle in particular works a little bit differently where the other ones is more of a temperature dial or like a temperature, some sort of temperature selection mode. For this, it's more of a set temperature selection. Uh, I don't think it's a huge deal because it gives you some of the more popular options, but this one is a little bit different. Compared to the unboxing experience of the JOCQ or the J-O-C-U-U -U, uh, that we reviewed last week, this one does have a better overall unboxing experience. The manual is printed on higher quality paper, it's thicker, it's much more well written. So anyways, we have the manual, we have the little marketing pamphlet, uh, essentially to show you the Instagram, the social media handles, and of course some of the support resources that they have. Next is just the kettle base. Okay, so yeah, so we have hit another one of those where the wire wraps around to the bottom of the package. So I guess I'll just have to put them onto the side and just drag it out. Okay, nothing else in the box. Let me just put this to the side. All right, so... All right, so once again, we have the kettle base. Uh, this one just seems to be made of aluminum on top. So once again, as far as the texture wise, as far as material wise, it is better than the one that we reviewed last week. So, so far the JQ has been the cheapest built out of all four of these. So these buttons does seem to be touch sensitive. It does give you the popular options. It gives you the 170, 180, all the way up to 212. So good thing that it does come with the most common coffee temperatures, which is the 205. So that's kind of handy. We have a lid that is mostly aluminum with a plastic handle piece on top, which is something that is quite common in electric kettles. But overall, the matte finish on the material is quite nice. And then lastly, of course, we have the kettle itself. It has a very similar base to most of the kettles that we have seen. And of course, the handle itself is going to be plastic, but they did add this flat piece here. So I suppose it's meant to improve the ergonomics on this piece but it does have some very rough finishes along the side. So for something that we are constantly touching, this might bother me a little bit on the long run, but we'll see. Once again, here's with the lid on, sits flat on the base. Overall, I think this is quite a pleasant looking piece. The spout itself have a very, very similar sort of that sharp 
spout that we see on some of the other electric kettles. I'm expecting this spout to be a faster flowing spout as well. All right, something else I do want to mention about this particular kettle's base is that it also comes with a retractable cord system, which as you guys know, I really appreciate on kettles like these. Even though the cords are usually always relatively short, but because I like to keep them on the counter, which is relatively close to the socket, I do like to keep the extra cords clean up. So it's nice to have a core storage system. As some of you might have remembered with the fellow EKG, I did mention that I wish that kettle had something like this. So let me go ahead and clean this kettle up and we will add some water. And again, we will do a boiling test. So be right back. All right, guys, I went ahead and cleaned up the Kosori and I have filled up both the EKG on my right hand as well as the Kosori with 0.8 liters of water. Of course, we are gonna go ahead and place the lid on turn the Kosori on. The Kosori just have a very simple interface, which is nice to see, especially when it compared to the kettle that we saw on the previous video. It's simply an on button and then select the temperature that you want. It's going to boil to that temperature and then you have a separate hold button. So everything is very, very self-explanatory. Now, whether or not you like this sort of button layout, this button look, uh, that is up to your personal preference. I will probably prefer something with a dial and a display, but this is very, very straightforward and very foolproof, which I appreciate. So once again, I'm gonna take out the timer. We are going to turn both of these on. 205, start. All right, so the fellow EKG have done boiling at just around, well, I think it was around five minutes and 50 seconds. Uh, the Kosori looks like it's still going. Okay, now it's done. So six minutes and five seconds. So it looks like once the water is finished boiling, it does turn off. So I guess you wanna turn the whole temperature on. You just wanna do it on button and then press the whole temp button. And of course the 205 uh, needs to be selected. It does make several beeps indicating that it is done. So it's quite nice to have, especially when it does not have a display. However, the beeping is very, very low in volume. So if you guys do choose to go with this option, I guess just gotta listen for the sound. All right, so since it does not have a actual display, one problem I'm foreseeing is that you don't actually know if the water is being boiled properly or actually when you are uh, doing your pour over, whether or not the water are being brought back to the temperature that you want or you know exactly where it's at. So that might be an, a source of annoyance, but it is something that I will be testing for on my daily use. I will be probing the temperature in between pores just to make sure that it is bringing the temperature up to where we set it. So it remains to be seen whether or not this kettle will be accurate in between the pores. But before we even get there, let's go ahead and test to see if it's accurate at this current point. So once again, both of these probes are showing 81 degrees at this current point. So that is constant. Let's go ahead and probe. Whoops, dropped the lid there. So do be careful about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and close it and allow that to come back up to temperature a little bit. I do hear the kettle boil. Let's put number two in the fellow EKG. As expected, it's fairly accurate at around 203. Like I mentioned in the previous videos, I have noticed with these kettles, once you open the lid, it does reduce the internal temperature a little bit just because we are allowing the temperature to release out of the opening on the, on the lid here. So it is normal to see about a, de a degrees difference between what's on the display versus what is showing on the kettle. All right, so I think the Kosori have finished boiling one more time. Let me just go ahead and put the probe in. All right, cool. So right now it's showing a temperature of 207 as you guys can see over here. So again, the probe number one is going to be for the Kosori, number two will be for the EKG. So right now the Kosori is showing 207. Just to double check, let's reverse these two probes. Once again, the EKG obviously is still showing the 203 and 204 on the display here. The Kosori's temperature did drop a little bit. Let's close the lid and let it boil. So, you know, while we're waiting for that, I did notice, I guess the way that the coil turns on behaves a little bit differently on all of the kettles. The overware that we first unboxed um, have a very sort of a weak power turn on, which means the temperature ramps up very, very slowly. The Jacu that we unboxed on the previous video have a 
sort of a very aggressive stepped about like two 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 stepped heating process where it ramps up quickly and then stops and then ramps up again this one just by listening to when the coil turns on seems to have a more of a mellow like a slow ramp up but let's see yeah so right now it's showing a 198 once again we have swapped the probe so it's showing 198 and before it was 199 on the kosori even though we have the temperature held at 205 and unfortunately there's no display on the kettle so there's no way for me to tell what the internals think the temperatures are so that is that right off the bat the issue that i'm seeing with a preset button system like this is that since we noticed a temperature discrepancy usually with the other kettles i can just say okay this kettle tends to undershoot by about two three degrees so when i boil i'll simply boil two to three degrees higher and have it held there so this way at least the actual temperature will be where we want it in this case we are jumping straight from 195 to 205 to 212 that means given what we see right now that the temperature is about four or five degrees off the next up temperature we're talking about fully boiled at 212 and that might be a little bit too hot so once again i'll be keeping my eye on this particular temperature as i use it daily just to see if it's a huge issue as far as daily usage is concerned but right now that's the problem that i'm seeing uh, it will be very very difficult to try to compensate for that variance so once again let me go ahead and take a look at the actual pour first obviously the ekg needless to say very slow very very controlled then the kosori you know what? it's actually not bad the flow is actually quite easy to get consistent um, even when I tilt it like this, it's actually fairly easy to try to have a very small stream going. It doesn't really sort of waver or gets broken up. So I think it's actually quite nice. And of course, it does pour a whole lot faster than the EKG. So once again, the handling of the kettle itself, the little flat piece here on the side does add a nice touch as far as ergonomics is concerned. It, it is nice to place your thumb there. But like I mentioned before, it does have that little like rough finish on these edges. And it does have this hot metal ring here. But compared to the one on the fellow EKG, it is a little bit harder for your hand to land on that little metal piece versus uh, what I mentioned before with this metal piece where it's quite easy to, to get your hand there. Now I know that some people hold their kettle like this and if you're one of those, obviously your thumb will be nowhere near that metal piece, but your index finger still will be. I have gotten quite used to holding the kettle this way. So recently I haven't had any experience where my uh, finger got burned by that metal piece, but definitely when I first got this kettle, that was a issue. So yeah, so in terms of the handling, in terms of the ease of poor ease of control this one is not bad at all not bad at all it's probably one of the better ones uh, out of the four now in terms of build quality just by looking at it externally this one is very very similar to the build quality on the wilson's that we have reviewed before there is the bottom plastic piece that houses the heating coils you have a little ridge where it connects to the rest of the body plastic handle like i said plastic lid but the matte finish on this kettle is quite nicely done. The paint job on here does not have that little wavy texture to it. So that I do appreciate. And when it comes to the temperature hold mode, just like with the other kettles that we have included in this series, the temperature hold mode will go up to 60 minutes. And that's pretty much it. It doesn't really have any other unique functions. Lastly, something I want to mention is that in this booklet, it does come with a very easy to understand instruction, especially with a lot of kettles in this price range. A lot of times they have a lot of broken English in these instructions and this one, it's good to see that it doesn't. It actually looks like somebody spent time and laid this out with some color indications with nice graphics that's pretty easy to understand. And on the lid itself, it does have a little adjustment knob. Uh, that, that you can do to tighten up the lid if you think the lid is on too loose, which is pretty interesting. I don't really see this. I mean, I think with most kettles, you, you, you can do it, but just there's not a lot of times in the instruction that actually tells you to do that. And on the handle just before, it does have a very easy to understand the scaling instruction. So just in case, if you guys want to descale your kettle. So overall, I think in terms of product design and marketing, it's definitely nice to see 
with this particular kettle. So that is it for this unboxing and first impression. Hopefully you found it to be helpful, especially if you are searching for a budget kettle or if you are looking at this kettle in particular. And of course, they tune on our channel for the head to head video at the end of this series. And that is it for this episode. Of course, if you are new here, be sure to give us a like and a subscribe. And of course, share this video with anybody else who you think might find it to be helpful. All right, as always, please take care and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.